Welcome to the Navy's newscast for Friday, September 27, 2024. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. The government of St. Kitts and the Navy's in partnership with the Navy's Island Administration will host the National Consultation on Crime and Violence Navy's Edition on October 4th. I've been asked to inform the general public that the Nevis leg of the National Consultations on Crime will be held at the Malcolm Gishard Recreational Park on Friday the 4th of October, 9 a.m. We will have the consultation on crime. That is an ongoing national initiative launched by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of National Security. We're inviting the entire Nevisian public to come out and share their views. So that's next Friday the 4th of October at 9 a.m at the Malcolm Gishard Park. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley. The National Consultation on Crime and Violence is part of a 90-day campaign which includes a series of initiatives and actions designed to address the root causes of violence and promote long-term peace and security in St. Kitts and Nevis. Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley on Thursday, September 26th, congratulated Her Honor Yasmin Clark, who has been appointed as Chief Magistrate in St. Kitts and Nevis. This is quite historic since Ms. Clark is the first Nevisian to have been appointed to this prestigious position of Chief Magistrate. Uh, Ms. Clark, if you're listening, congratulations to you. Uh, I know Ms. Clark very well. She hails from Brown Hill where I also hail from, and for many years in my youth, we were separated only by a fence line because I grew up right next to her. So I feel a sense of personal satisfaction to see her elevated in this way. So Ms. Yasmin Clark, Magistrate Yasmin Clark, takes up the position of Chief Magistrate, and that was made effective on the 1st of August, 2024, quite historic. For the island of Nevis. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, speaking at his September 26th press conference. The Nevis Public Library is inviting the general public to view an exhibition it has mounted in celebration of St. Kitts and Nevis's 41st anniversary of independence. Librarian Shea Swanston Wilkin explains. In keeping with the theme, Together a People, Proud and Strong, Independence 41, we selected persons from our community who would have contributed in the different fields to our island's progress. And so we looked at areas of education, we looked at areas um, in farming, sports, and uh, health. And in these various areas, we were able to get persons who volunteered quite willingly for us to put them on showcase. And so the exhibition features these individuals with a bit of their profile and also pictures of themselves and their accomplishments. The exhibition features former teachers Robina Rouse Ward and Avril Williams Richards in the area of education, nurses Merlis David Jones and Bernadette Jeffers in the area of health. Olympian Kervin Wallace in the area of sports, including athletics and bodybuilding, and Vanessa Morton in the area of agriculture and botany. A few persons have come on board to look at the exhibition, and um, we are expecting others to come forward as well. The persons featured on the exhibition wall too have come forward to see what it looks like, and their feedback has been positive. Persons are happy that they could have been showcased in this light. Some of them would have mentioned that they would not have received such recognition even in their years of working because most of them have been retired and so it's been a pleasure for them to see themselves being showcased for this Independence 41 exhibition. I would just like to um, invite the public to come on out to look at the exhibition and also to recognize that persons on Nevis are so gifted and they would have treasured their time working in the different fields and feel proud of the accomplishments and to share it with the public and it's an encouragement for others to come forward for a similar exhibition in the future. The Davis Public Library's Independence 41 exhibition is available for viewing by the public until Monday, September 30th. Still to come. We cannot continue to spend and spend and spend and within sometimes a matter of days what we have spent on has been destroyed. We'll give you the details after this break. Truly, 
one of the few places that has an untouched beauty that has captivated the hearts of many. Nevis is everything you imagine. Welcome back. Premier the Honorable Mark Brantley is urging parents to encourage their children to treat their school's premises, furniture and equipment responsibly. He made the appeal at his Thursday, September 26th press conference. We have had situations, ladies and gentlemen, where we have repaired toilets, put in place brand new facilities, and within less than a week, they have been destroyed. We have had people put rocks into the toilets. That is just willful, blatant vandalism. That is a common, common situation that we're dealing with across our school network. And we need to talk about it. And I am seriously saying to my colleagues that when these things happen and we can identify who has done it, we need to hold the parents accountable for the repairs. We cannot continue to spend and spend and spend. And within sometimes a matter of days, what we have spent on has been destroyed. The Premier made the call as he noted that several schools were recently repaired and upgraded. The Charleston Secondary School, Nevis Sixth Form, work was done there including repairs to the parapet wall at the Sixth Form, repairs to the roof at the Sixth Form, painting and tiling of bathrooms, repairs to the administrative offices, the gates and the entrance to the Sixth Form. Major repairs were conducted at the St. James Primary School with most of the work being done on the hall. This follows major repairs to the roof on the infant block in 2023, on the school's kitchen between the end of 2023 and 2024, and repairs to the bathrooms during the east of 2024. The work on the hall is now complete, with the exception of the installation of the partitions in the hall. At the Charleston Preschool, we have done and are doing major repairs there. Those include the removal of the roof, the expansion of the restroom facilities, kitchen area and the supervisor's office. The well-needed repairs will allow for improved operations at that center. In the interim, the Charleston Preschool was relocated to the Alberta Payne Community Center in Bath, where operations have been going smoothly. The work is approximately 85% complete, and the school should be back to the refurbished space by the end of October. There were some minor repairs done to some other schools, including painting, repairs to bathrooms, tiling, and repairs to doors. The ministry appreciates that schools are in constant need of repairs due to the level of use of the facilities. As such, we try to respond to the needs on an ongoing basis and to prioritize major repairs in the future. Caribbean Youth Junior Minister of Tourism Kiana Warner on Friday, September 27th, shared a message from the Secretary General of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, Zorab Polali Kashpeli, in observance of World Tourism Day. This year's theme is Tourism and Peace. As we mark World Tourism Day this year, our planet is engulfed by war and insecurity. With one in four of the global population living in areas of conflict, many of us have first-hand experience of suffering caused by war and the impacts extend far beyond the borders of these conflicts. We must urgently stand up for peace. The global tourism family is broad and diverse, but what unites us is our shared humanity. Tourism brings the world together. It brings trust and respect. It lays the foundation for cooperation and safeguards against conflict. The message notes that when peace is restored in conflict zones, we should stand ready to assist people in rebuilding and reconnecting. Our focus on education brings young people from different cultures together and it creates opportunities for them to find work and meaning. Our work in tourism for rural development means nobody is left behind and the economies can grow equally and fairly. By working together, we can ensure a brighter future for all. Let us take this occasion to set the tone for future generations. We need the values of tourism now more than ever. Let us honor international law and the principles of the United Nations. 
Above all, let us collaborate with you as a united sector to make tourism a beacon of hope. Regardless of where you are or how you choose to celebrate Tourism Day, I wish you peace and prosperity. Happy World Tourism Day. Caribbean Youth Junior Minister of Tourism Kayana Wana was also expected to deliver a powerful message from young people at the Caribbean World Tourism Day virtual forum under the theme Resilience and Renewal, Building a Peaceful Future. That's it for this edition of the Navy's Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing. I'm Donis Wilkinson-Keynes.